it's a good future. I mean, look, when does when do the events of Halo take place? I don't Hundreds know. Hundreds of years in the future. So we have to get through a little bit of a rough patch before we're there. And this is the rough patch. We're getting through it. We're going to do it. We're going to win. the events of Halo were the rough patch. Are you kidding me? Do you see how fucking cool they look? Yeah, a lot of people died, but they had colonized <laughs> space. The fucking Spartan armor, fucking awesome. <laughs> Master Chief had a hologram that maybe he'll fuck in the next game. We have holograms now. Yeah, you can't fuck them. You're not friends with them. <laughs> yeah, you can't fuck a hologram, man. Not yet. Yeah, you this, guy, this, the... guy, this guy thinks the holograms like him. What, you think that cashier likes you because you told me you had a nice day? <laughs> you got to get the hard light holograms, right? Yeah. From, from Star Trek. Is that a thing? Because like in the Star Trek, you could fuck the holograms, right? Yeah. On the hol- Did uh, anyone me and Chris have never seen Star Trek. I thought Chris I, for I, sure I, yeah, watched Star Trek. I thought for sure you watched Star Trek. I don't Virgil. really, but I know what you're talking about. I thought you could fuck the holograms in Star Trek. They oh, is like that these, what Han Solo was? No. That's like this room with like a huge simulation. Lay troll in face. <laughs> Lay troll face. Like a sir. <laughs> Matt, if you just get VR equipment, you can do that now. You you know, you can't. You just look at the hologram. You'd have to still crank your own meat. As long as you're masturbating. I'm sure there's a way you can sort of homebrew a system where you're in a flashlight and it's mechanical. There are, yeah. I I, I think that technology exists. As long as you're masturbating, it's not, you're not, you're not interacting with the technology, in my opinion. You have it has to be doing it for you for you to actually having be having sex. Call me a luddite or whatever, but if you're not actually if your hands are involved, you're not. Having well, no, your sex hands wouldn't be involved. It's just this isn't something like Sony would sell. You'd have to you know buy it. So you're saying that right now in the year 2018, you could jerry rig a system where you could have sex virtually without any kind of you touching yourself. I don't think you'd have to jerry rig it. I I I I think there are distributors of this kind of thing. Okay, but are you talking about? Well, how do you engage the genitals? It's you know, it's just it's a mechanical device. <laughs> okay, we have to stop talking about this. Yeah, why do you want to know so much about? Yeah, this? What's, wow, this <laughs> stop being a bit. It's just you <laughs> wanting to perfect the technology. Go on Kickstarter. That's like every Kickstarter. Now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm trying I, to make the no, perfect artificial. Clip. No, you know why I'm asking? Not for myself. I would never be interested in this. But this is a good transition. Because I'm worried about people who now, apparently, according to the elite media, I'm supposed to be worried about and be very uh, sympathetic towards and want to find a solution for, and that are incels. Man, can we talk about how funny this incel shit is? It's I the mean, funniest it, thing it, on earth. You know the part I love about it the most? All the New York media people who have almost exclusively written think pieces about how all, every time they have sex, it's just horrible and unsatisfying and gives them severe depression and get drunk seven nights a week are like, what's the big deal? Just have, be nice to someone and have sex. <laughs> yeah. As though, yeah. Oh, yeah. You guys have figured it out. Yeah. Yeah. You're a little bit better than them, but yeah. not by much. It's a media ecology that's, that's, yeah. that's powered by sexual neuroses and then someone has is slightly less good at it and you can just totally uh but the thing is people like any hierarchy right they're well, a little bit above the incels and they're like look i have sex it's great but the thing is is that that's what that's the real issue though is that incel is a specific thing it's not just somebody who can't have sex it's somebody who who has turned that into a justification for their hardened misogynistic worldview that they ha- are reinforced by through online they're people who whose disaffection and and you can argue about whether it's a frustration with the fact that they aren't able to dominate women the way that they could have in previous generations uh, or that they're just lonelier the way everyone is in the 21st century. Uh, either way, it starts with a sense of of being unable to engage in traditional romantic relationships. And then the thing that makes them different than just a, a general term of someone who is romantically unfortunate or a virgin or something is somebody who then takes that frustration and then plows it into the internet and then gets into a community of, of similarly afflicted men who the reinforce each other's worst pathologies and instincts and then turn that into basically a, a worldview that 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 is essentially nihilistic but powered by at the at the heart by by a misogynistic rage right it's the same thing that seems to happen in a lot of uh communities that are built 
solely on commiserating and uh, only the commiserating is that it eventually just turns into no one helps each other or gets better. They just sort of egg each other on to get angrier and angrier. Yeah, yeah. Or no, more and yeah. more miserable or whatever it is. Yes. Whatever, you know, obviously for men who are socially dislocated, the trend will go towards making each other angrier and, you know, possibly more violent. And then for other people, it might just be to make each other sadder and go deeper into themselves. But yeah, yeah you know, it, it's a very, there have always been guys who just couldn't fuck. <laughs> I mean, there have, there have. Yeah, no. But this but, is a particularly modern affliction right. because they seem, they are both lonelier and less lonely than their than their uh, yeah, ancestors. Because their ancestors can... did not have communities that they could build on this, where they could access everyone else in the world who felt this way. Yeah, which turns out may have been a good thing. Uh, well, what's such a trip though is that the reason people are talking about incels now is that one of them plowed into a bunch of people in Toronto and killed them. Right. In a, a literal ISIS style attack, and within a week, you have people in the pages of the New York Times going, "Well, let us hear them out." <laughs> which i don't remember happening after the nice attack i don't remember any articles like isis do they have a point should the should the great satan of the west be destroyed should the caliphate be extended across the globe nobody had that nobody wanted to bat that around but because these guys are relatable to a certain type of i don't know dalthatian uh, sexual freak uh all of a sudden their violent outbursts uh, our calls for help instead of cries to be wiped off the face of the earth. But uh, I promised that I wasn't going to read the Douthat article. Uh, I said that on Twitter, and I haven't. Uh, Virgil, you looked at it. Is there anything worth responding to in it? Yeah, I'm taking your word for it because I'm not reading it. Mm, you want to give it a shot? Yeah, go for it. All right. This one's titled The Redistribution of Sex by Ross Douthat. One lesson to be drawn from we recent Western history might be this. Sometimes the extremists and radicals and weirdos see the world more clearly than the respectable <laughs> and moderate and sane. You laugh at me because I'm different. I laugh at you because you're all the same. All Lost kinds of it. phenomena, starting as far back as the Iraq War and the crisis of the Euro, but accelerating in the age of populism, have made more sense in the light of analysis by reactionaries and radicals than is portrayed in the organs of establishment opinion. Uh, and therefore, I will be resigning because yeah. this is all a farce. <laughs> yeah. You just basically, uh, yeah, you wrote yourself out of a gig. This is part of why there's been so much recent agitation over universities and op-ed pages and other forums for debate. There's general understanding that the ideological mainstream is inadequate to the moment, but nobody can decide whether that means we need purges or pluralism, a spirit of curiosity and conversation, or a furious war against whichever side you think is evil. I can decide. Don't fucking put words in my mouth, Ross Douthat. <laughs> I can decide. I know. The time for jibber-jabber is over. For those more curious than Marshall, one useful path through this thicket is to look at areas where extremists and eccentrics from very different worlds are talking about the same subject. So ISIS killers and incels, basically, he means. Such overlap is no guarantee of wisdom, but it's often a sign that there's something interesting going on. <laughs> Op-ed pages are a land of many contrasts. Which brings me to the sex robots. <laughs> Well, actually, it brings me to the case of Robin Hansen, a George Mason economist, libertarian, and noted brilliant weirdo. Commenting on the recent terrorist violence in Toronto, Hansen offered this provocation. If we are concerned about the just distribution of property and money, why do we assume that the desire for some sort of sexual redistribution is inherently ridiculous? Wait a minute. You're a libertarian. You, are, you don't credit the redistribution of wealth. So f what the fuck are you even talking about? You, 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 uh, you prima facie re refuse to redistribute wealth, <laughs> but you're going to want to talk about redistributing fucking sex like it's a goddamn commodity, but you won't redistribute any actual commodities. Well, that's that's really the essence of. So it's over then. Shut up. He's finished. <laughs> After all, he wrote, one might plausibly argue that those with much less access to sex suffer to a similar degree as those with low income and might similarly hope to gain from organizing around this identity <laughs> to lobby for redistribution along this axis and to at least implicitly threaten violence. OK, their demands are not. I, met. Uh, Hold on a minute. So I, I don't know that you could plausibly argue that, but you could definitely argue it. Prof professor walking stick. OK, no, hold on a minute, though. He might be doing something else. He might be trying to uh, undermine the case for wealth re redistribution oh, yeah, yeah. by saying, well, if by your logicking it yeah. and saying, if you want to redistribute wealth, doesn't that mean you should also want to force women to have sex with these weirdos? That's what and if you don't want to force them to have sex with these weirdos, 
then you shouldn't redistribute wealth. That is the only way that that argument is even that's probably surface what, yeah, plausible. Yeah, yeah. That's also incredibly stupid, but it's the only way that's even surface well, plausible. Well, 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 the, wealth is a lot like uh, sex. You know, if you don't have any experience with it, you come into it, you either blow through it in thirty seconds, or you never have any fun with it. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the 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 tell is him saying, or at least implicitly threaten violence if their demands are not met. Uh, no, that that's probably the case, but I guess Ross did not realize he that. Just, just took whiffed, it at face value. Whiffed on it that hard. That's amazing, Ross. God, you dummy. Okay. You little bearded dipshit. Uh, skipping ahead. A number of the critics I saw engaging with the essay tended to respond the way a normal center-left writer like Weissman engaged with Hansen's thought experiment by commenting on its weirdness or ideological extremity rather than engaging fully with its substance. <laughs> but to me, reading them together offers a good case study in how intellectual eccentrics like socialists and populists in politics, can surface issues and problems that lurk beneath the surface of more mainstream debates. By this, I mean that as offensive or utopian the redistribution of sex might sound, the idea is entirely responsive to the logic of late modern sexual life, and its pursuit would be entirely characteristic of a recurring pattern in liberal societies. So this is Ross going back to form here. First, because, like other forms of neoliberal deregulation, the sexual revolution created new winners and losers, new hierarchies to replace the old ones, <laughs> privileging the beautiful and rich and socially adept in new ways and relegating others to new yeah, forms because of rich, yeah, it's, it's, frustration. It's, it's, rich and attractive like, people could never get laid before the sexual revolution. Yeah, it, w- it wasn't at all like until about 1963, if you owned two hats, you could fuck anyone. Yeah. They had to fuck you. <laughs> Fucking I mean, poor, Louis the Fourteenth was just sadly jerking off into his chamber pot. He could never get well, laid. The, this is... The classic Ross, right? Because it's like if you look at sort of a lot of people's sexual relationships now, you can go, yeah, a lot of these are wrong and we've commodified so much human interaction that these are awful and unfulfilling for people like all of modern life is. But his solution is to harken back to a past that never existed. Yes. And he goes in the complete wrong direction. Instead of going, maybe we shouldn't commoditize so much of our interaction. Uh, maybe... We live in an outstandingly lonely time. Maybe the problem isn't so much promiscuous sex as it is everything is transactional. It's uh, let's make it so that you have to give someone four donkeys to get a hand job. <laughs> let's bring back mandatory tithing to yeah. the one true church. Second, because in this new landscape and amid other economic and technological transformations, the sexes seem to be struggling generally to relate to one another with social and political chasms opening between them and not only marriage and family, but also sexual, sexual activity itself in recent decline. Third, because the culture's dominant message about sex is still essentially Hefnerian, <laughs> despite certain revisions attempted by feminists since the heyday of the That, that, that was the Armenian guy who invented sexual harassment. <laughs> A message that uh, frequency and variety in sexual experience is as close to a summum bonum as the human condition has to offer, that the greatest possible diversity in sexual desires and tastes and identities should not only be accepted, but cultivated, and that virginity and celibacy are at best strange and at worst pitiable states. Uh, I want to, I want to, I got to paraphrase a uh, friend of the show and frequent guest Jacob Bacharat, who on Twitter pointed out one of the central fallacies of Ross's point there when he says that one of the things about Hefnerian sexual idea ideology is that it prizes variety. Uh, but the thing about Hefner was that his sexual uh, aesthetic and, and concept was incredibly monotonous. It was one, it was basically a, a, a million copies of the same person. And, 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 and Duthat has the, because he has a literal minded dullard, he thinks, well, a lot of different women, but all women who essentially look the same. <laughs> because Hefner was a reactionary figure. He was, he was trying to bring back sort of the, the pre World War II gender dynamics that had been disrupted by women entering the workforce. And that, and that Hefnerian sexuality is, is conservative. And that's part of the, Part of his inability to reckon with the past the way it actually was as opposed to the way that he thinks of it in his head. Well, Hefner for these guys is kind of what like Jay-Z is to more boomer Teacock conservatives. Yes, which that's is good. Say, which is to say, yeah, Jay-Z for the past 10 years has been like, I set up the investment trust. No taxes, hit bust. <laughs> <laughs> Went to the fashion show. Oh, no. What's that on the floor? And it just <laughs> nothing but, yeah, starting restaurant groups, uh, the best type of furniture you can buy when you have a young child. And but if you talk to a conservative about it because he like met Obama or whatever, they're like, 
this man, he's talking about his bitches and his hoes and selling <laughs> crack, which he hasn't done in years. But with Hefner, Hefner just for seemingly 150 years uh, had a magazine where it was like, what if a woman wore a boat captain hat, but you could see her nipples? Just very <laughs> boring, like the type of thing you jack off to when you're 12 and you're afraid of seeing a vagina or whatever. But they're like, this is the most freaky shit I've ever seen. This bitch is smoking a cigar and she's half naked. What the fuck? Put it away. Oh, my God. And it's right next to the this 10 is- best hi-fis of 1965. <laughs> <laughs> this, oh, this is too much. <laughs> Well, this master narrative inevitably makes both the new inequalities and the decline of actual relationships that much more difficult to bear, which in turn encourages people, as ever under modernity, to place their hope for escape from the cost of one revolution in a further one yet to come, be it political, social, or technological, which will supply, if not the promised utopia, at least some form of redress for the many people that progress has obviously left behind. There is an alternative conservative response, of course, namely that our widespread isolation and unhappiness and sterility might be dealt with by reviving or adapting older ideas about the virtues of monogamy and chastity and permanence and the special respect owed to the celibate. Okay, do you remember when your wife was like a slave that you had kids with? And also, how are you doing that without dismantling capitalism, the force behind every single fucking thing that he's talking about? You're going to allow this rampaging fucking... uh, de-atomizing machinery, this alienated uh, 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 economic system that, that turns people towards its purpose and away from any kind of idea of the self? No, 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 no. Ross needs to go on PUA hate and <laughs> explain to them the virtues of monogamy and chastity. It's well, literally, that's, that's what the alt-right is. The alt-right are guys who went from that uh, PUA to this shit doesn't work pipeline, and then we're like, you know, it does work if we completely return society to how i imagine the 50s were. but in such an insanely small bar way at the beginning of this article he sort of suggests that his entire existence and the existence of an org- a thing like the new york times op-ed page has essentially been superseded by reality and is pointless but then he confirms that by after through his whole article pointing out the real chasm and a real crisis of identity in and and in, in relationships in humans in late capital existence and his response is tax credits for abstinence only education that's true it's like how do you look into the abyss and come out with that as your fucking response that's true he was all over rubio adding the fucking child the little measly child tax yeah. credit to the trump tax bill and he's like we did it yeah we did it everybody yeah, this is gonna turn it all around <laughs> yeah. folks this is gonna this is gonna uh this is gonna make whole what has been sh- uh, bre- broken apart this is gonna make uh make straight what has been rendered crooked it's gonna be fucking uh taxpayer assisted uh inducements to have a kid in wedlock Yo, insane gibberish Shout out to everyone who doubted me, but we got $200 for new parents. <laughs> Woo! Family's coming back, baby. <laughs> oh, c- congratulations. Oh, congratulations. Uh, you just had a kid. Here's your $200 uh, check for having a kid. Here's your $10,000 bill for having a child your Rubio, in this hospital. Your Rubio box balance is negative $125. <laughs> But I expect the logic of commerce and technology will be consciously harnessed as already in pornography to address the unhappiness of incels, be they angry and dangerous or simply depressed and despairing. The left's increasing zeal to transform prostitution into a legalized and regulated, in scare quotes here, sex work, will have this end implicitly in mind. The libertarian and general male fascination, that's redundant, with virtual (laughs) reality porn and sex robots will increase as those technologies improve. And at a certain point, without this is just one long run on sentence. And at a certain point, without anyone formally debating the idea of a right to sex, right thinking people will simply come to agree that some such right exists and that it makes sense to look to some combination of changed laws, new technologies, and evolved mores to fulfill it. Whether sex workers and sex robots can actually deliver real fulfillment is another matter, but that they will eventually be asked to do it in service of a redistributive goal. That for now seems creepy or misogynist or radical feels pretty much inevitable. So he's saying that the dumb like Ben Shapiro take on universal health care, which is that you force doctors to work at gunpoint for free, will happen if we legalize prostitution. Yeah, but essentially. He, because he wants to blame, really went for it this week, Ross. He really wa- he wants to blame, the field. He wants to blame this hyper accelerating capitalist sort of endpoint 
where 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 people have essentially been stretched into their individual fucking molecules like somebody being pulled into a black hole he wants to turn that into the fault of the 60s cultural shift he wants to he wants to blame that on on birth control pills my yeah. culture my, my my western patriarchal culture is so strong it's the strongest ever we never should have left it by the way it was destroyed by guys with bowl cuts smoking dirt weed and going hey can you give me a groovy hand job it's just it's a he he yeah, he's just he's just a, a sad wizard who 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 lives in a and d realm where a bunch of dirty hippies cast sexual promiscuity and then did like a dex roll. Is that a thing? I don't know. Is that yeah, I don't think roll. you would use a dex roll. I don't know. Okay. They ca- what if you're finger blasting? They cast oh, a well, spell for sexual promiscuity and then they probably be an aura. OK, an aura of sexual promiscuity. And then they rolled a what do they roll? I mean, it depends, but oh. generally, I mean, I think if the aura would last a certain period of time, you'd have to renew it or perhaps to use magic spell points in order to sustain it. Okay. Well, not, not me, dude. They, they've been saying my aura lasts forever. The short answer is it depends what class you are. Uh, all right. Well, all right. okay. I'm a, I'm a fucker. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So in the game, I got clones and they've never had sex. But they're clones of me, so they're pretty good at sex. <laughs> Okay, so that he thinks that happened, yeah, as opposed to capital acceleration be capitally accelerating. That's well, why, as I said before, I will always respect the Nick Land psychopaths yeah. who I, who identify w- the actual vector and just say that's good, and we should all cease. We should want to cease to be. We should want singularity, and we should we should want to, to basically get well, rid well, of humanity. What I don't understand instead of trying to split the difference and just basically want to. For the point of feeling right. Like, at the end of the day, guys like Douthat, they don't actually care if anything changes. They just want to be on record as of being, as of being the, the soft, quiet, correct voice of, of, of decency who is, who is not listened to in the howling, uh, profane public sphere that has been cheapening by the day. They just want to be that. They don't actually care if anything changes. Well, what I don't understand is uh, how are men worse off now post-sexual revolution or how are, the, how are the incel men worse off other than that they're more envious, I guess? Yeah, the old path for incel men was that you worked in a little brick shed on a rich guy's property and they're like, oh yeah, that guy wipes my donkey's asses and he's a simpleton. It was that you were a torgo. Yeah. yeah, and you were you were alone in your torgoness. Now all the torgos get to go online and yeah. assure each other that it's not your torgoness that's the problem; it's the women. They all got together and decided that they're only going to distribute their sexual goodies to the chads and going to prevent you from having it, even though you are imposing upon them the exact same lookist standards that you're blaming them for having on you. Yeah. Uh, that's we- the thing I never got about those motherfuckers. They are mad at hot women for only wanting to be with hot men, but would never consider being with an un- someone who they would consider less attractive. So, so, the, so the general objection is that women now have higher standards and uh, more reproductive freedom uh, and not, you know, they're, uh, being in the workforce. They don't you know, have to rely yeah. on marrying an incel man. Also, yeah. like that first part isn't even true. You don't spend enough time around women if you really think that. You follow any woman and look at her timeline. Uh, Alan Dershowitz could get it. Yeah. Oh my God, the Noid could crush my. Oh husband. my God. Yeah. Um. But which way, Western man? Which way? Commiserating about Becky's and Stacy's in a Discord that will later be seized by the FBI because <laughs> one of you used the Zamboni to kill somebody, or, or. You and another bunch of guys with dusty floppy hats sharing a can of baked beans on a rich guy's estate and wondering what it's like to hold somebody's hand and going, oh, I think I'll see, see some rain clouds. <laughs> Which way, Western man? Both are great. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Like, incels, they used to just all join the Navy. Like, the British Army, the British Navy was just incels. Yeah. They were on the sea for 12 years. Yeah. They never saw women. Those are your incels. And they, they would had, fuck each other and then lime barrels. Yeah, they would fuck each other. And then every time they saw, they saw like, oh, my God, this is a beautiful bird I've never seen before. Let's kill this piece of shit. <laughs> Just punching <laughs> rare birds to death. Uh, <laughs> there's that story. The dollop did a story about this the dodo, in the 19th yeah. century. 
No, this is a different one. Oh. In the 19th century, a British uh, a merchant ship or something found this island off the coast of Australia, way off the coast of Australia, and it had like a million penguins on it. It was just the entire ground was basically nothing but penguins, and they just immediately started murdering them all. <laughs> Like the thing is, is that they couldn't eat them. They're not really good food. They just started murdering them, and only after they just started murdering them, they figured out, oh, we can put them into a giant press and turn them into grease that we can use to light candles. Oh my and it's God. not as good as whale whale oil or anything. It's basically well, we it's like ditch, birds. It's the ditch weed of 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 flammable you know look material. But we get to kill all these birds. These. Birds who play little jokes on each other and have a little society. We get to flatten them. <laughs> Holy shit. We get to just run around because they're not scared of humans. They've never seen them before. You can just walk up to them and club them all to death. And they oh, did that. That had to be the best day of their lives. Oh, my God. Can you imagine? It's like real life Grand Theft Auto oh my where God. the cops never show up. So you're, you're just these sweet little birds. Oh, my God. <laughs> so your suggestion oh. is put them all on a boat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, could call yeah. It, we could call it the tragic Christian. I mean, we oh, very maybe, good. Maybe, maybe very the good. thing we shouldn't use robot technology to make sex bots. We should use it to make fake penguins, so they're not really <laughs> killing penguins. Or since there's no like water to, there's no frontier, quote unquote, to send anybody to water wise. Everything you know, everything leads to somewhere where people are. You just send them into space. Oh, wait, wait. Steal all that Bezos technology. Say, sorry, buddy, you're not escaping to Mars to watch us drown to death, bitch. No. You're here with us. No. All the incels can go to space. No, Felix had the answer right there. It's not that they deserve sex robots. They deserve uh, sex pedestrians to kill. <laughs> like robot pedestrians. Yeah. Oh, Just my God. Give them some simulated outlet for their invented rage against you, Stacey's or whatever. Have you ever yeah. seen that Demonious X video where he's playing the game Postal 2? And he's he's just of course murdering women. No, he's I like can't believe it. And he like throws a Molotov cocktail at one, and he goes, "Oh, a toasted bitch who has some marshmallows." <laughs> <laughs> it's just like horrifying. But it's like, you know, if you just made like a West World for these guys, where it was just like robots without souls that they could kill, like yeah, but then not know. let them out. But then the they same. would get really good at actual guns. That's stuff. why you can't God, leave them out. You can't you let can them do. out yeah. of it. Well, you, you make can't. It like, you have to lock like, them up. You allow make, people to. Go to therapy for free, or have parents like that. Something, I don't or know. yeah, not have every moment of everyone's day devoted to not fucking drowning, uh, so that they could you know talk to one another. Oh, you could god. do that. Oh god, that you know which one are we are going to do? That. Yeah, it's going to be the West World for yes. themselves to do yes. active shooters. Yes, yes. there'll be an That's active shooter Disney World. Well, you make the uh, guns different from real world guns. You know, you fuck with the yeah. Physics. You can't license them. Yeah. Yeah, we built this $3 trillion simulation, but we didn't want to license the guns. 